Hello, hi guys, this is Mr. Gagnon again. Um, we're going to take a peek at a problem now that includes some angles. And in the beginning of the year, we, uh, we worked with triangles and solving for uh, sides and angles. And um, you might have been wondering why we did that to, in the beginning of the year. Um, but now, now we're into the portion of the class where we're going to start using some of those uh, skills. So, all right, so here, here's, a, here's a typical um, simple angle two-dimensional problem. We're going to call this one kicking a ball, okay? I'm going to call this kicking a ball. So uh, here we are. Here's the ground. Okay, uh, here's uh, my guy of science. Okay, right there, and here's a soccer ball. And this guy is going to kick the soccer ball, and um, we want to know um, how far the soccer ball is going to land. And we know that when we kick a soccer ball, we, we, we put a force on it, which sends it up in the air, and then back down. So we got a couple things going on there. Okay. Now we do need to know a couple things. First of all, um, we're going to need to know the velocity of the ball. Okay, which uh, we can put as v sub b. Um, now velocities always have directions attached to them, and in this case, it's not going completely to the right. It's not going completely up. A little combination of both, actually. So if we look at uh, the angle at which the ball is being kicked, okay, that's part of the velocity. So let's say we launch that thing at 15 meters per second at an angle of 42 degrees. Okay, and we can actually uh, call that north of uh, east, okay, north of the east line, okay? So there's our velocity. Um, we have to figure out how far the ball has gone. Now, this is uh, a problem that I'm going to work out. It's going to take a little bit of time, um, but we're going to work through each process here. Now, here's, here's a situation now. Um, now we have a velocity at an angle, which well, doesn't really help us too much. Um, so let's think back to the problems where we had a, a ball or an arrow that was tossed up. Okay, we know that like at this point, okay, the highest point, we know that the velocity in the y direction is uh, zero. Then from the other problems, we also know that as this ball is moving over this way, that the x velocity doesn't change. So we know that the uh, velocity in the x direction, initial, equals velocity final in the x direction, Okay, which is very important to us when we're solving for this um, range we call. We call it. So um, we're, we're keeping these on level surfaces, and I think we're going to stay that way. So here's the deal. I've got to figure out how much y I've got and how much x I've got. Okay, so there's a little combo deal here. So if I bring this up, okay, and I draw this angle here. Here's 42 degrees. Okay, here's our velocity, V, okay, and here is the X part, okay, and then here is the Y part. Looks familiar, right? Yeah, we did this with uh, our, right, our right triangles, and we found out what this, these numbers were. So if I know that my velocity 
is equal to 15 meters per second here, then I should be able to solve for y and x. Okay, very simply. Okay, so the velocity in the y direction, uh, v sub y, we'll call it v naught sub y. That's the initial velocity in the y direction. We'll call this vf sub y. Okay, v naught sub x is the same as the v final sub x. So we need to find this velocity. We need to find this velocity because this has a bit of x and y. Okay, so we remember our old pal, so Katoa. We know that um, we've looking. We've got this one. This is our hypotenuse. Opposite. Let's find y first. V y. Okay. Opposite over hypotenuse. Okay. Opposite over hypotenuse. So v y over the hypotenuse of 15. Okay, we'll leave the units off. Equals opposite over hypotenuse sine 42. Okay, and I reverse that a little bit, but that's okay. So in moving this over here, we do a little bit of algebra. V naught Y equals 15 sine 42. Okay, so let's figure what that is. 42 sine times 15, 10. So initial velocity, V O Y is 15 sine 42 or 10 meters per second. So this ball is rising, starting to rise at 10 meters per second up. Okay, we know that. Okay, so let's write it down. V naught Y is 10 meters per second. You can even write north if you wanted to. So we, we found that out. The X one uses the adjacent and hypotenuse. So let's apply that same thing to there. So Vx or V naught X equals uh, 15 cosine 42. So let's do that. Uh, 42 cosine times 15. Uh, this X velocity V sub X is 11.1 to the right. So V sub X uh, equals V F X equals 11.1 meters per second. So all I've done, and we'll say uh, east, all I've done is I've broken up this vector into its X and its Y component. That's all I've done. All right, so now I've got the Vx, the Vy. Now I, I can also kind of fill in some of this chart because I know that the x is 11.1 meters per second. Okay, that's going to be 11.1 throughout the entire path of the projectile. Okay? So we know that. Now, um, now we have an issue where we have to figure out how long is this thing in the air for? Okay, how long is this guy in the air for? Well, we know we have an initial velocity. We know we have a final y velocity here of zero. Okay, that's kind of an important concept to understand is that. Um, so we can apply that to get the time. Okay, so let's get the time in the air. By the way, to here is only time half. 
we double it to get the time total. Um, so time half, okay, to get to the top. We're going to go take a peek at our uh, little sheet here. Okay. Well, I've got a formula right here that says, um, well, we've been using this one, but it's not falling freely. So that's not going to work. This one here might do the trick, though. Okay, so time half equals VF minus V naught over acceleration. In this case, it's gravity. So let's figure it out. Time half equals okay, VF, which is zero at the top, minus V naught. Okay, that's 10 over negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So this is going to be approximately 1. So time half is, is 1.02 seconds. Now that's to get to here. Okay, that's to get right to here. So I'm almost there with the time. I just have to double that. Time total 1.02 times 2. Okay. Time total is 2.04 seconds in the air. Okay. Now, this is important because we know that this thing's moving over constantly at 11.1 .1 meters per second in the x direction. So here we go. x equals v xt plus half a t squared. Is it accelerating in the x direction or is it staying the same? Well, it's staying the same. So this acceleration unit's gone. Our range now is v x t. Okay, so velocity in the x direction times the time. Okay, it's 11.1 .1 times the time in the air of 2.04 seconds. The range, after you figure this out, is 22.6 meters. So, here's the deal. Kick a ball at 15 meters a second at an angle of 42 degrees. You break that up into its X and Y components using a little trig. You know for a fact that if the X doesn't change, you know that the Y does change, and we do have time, okay, we can get the time times the uh, time in the air times the uh, velocity in the X direction, and we ended up with 22.6 meters, okay? We'll do a few practice problems here, but um, thank you for listening, and have a great day.